All right, this is uh, Cal 1. We're doing antiderivatives and indefinite integration. In this particular problem here, we're going to solve some differential equations given uh, our, some initial conditions here. Now, this is the second part of the second part of that first hour. Um, I've already done an hour, I believe, or close to it, on uh, the actual indifferent, uh, indefinite integration. And this is the actual second part. So if you're wondering where we're at here. So we're going to be given uh, this differential equation here. We've got f prime of x equal to 2x and some initial conditions at f of 0 is equal to 1. Now in the previous hour, we were uh, solving these and finding a general solution. Well, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be actually finding a particular solution. So I'm going to, uh, we're, going to we're going to solve this here. Then we're going to graph, us, graph some particular ones so you get an idea of uh, some particular solutions to this. Remember there's an infinite number of solutions to this, but there's going to be only one that passes through the point 0, 1. Alright, so I'll be uh, putting up a graph and so we can get a better idea of what that is. But first let's uh, go to the uh, drawing board. So we had uh, f prime of x is equal to 2x and we've got f of 0 is equal to 1. What we're going to want to do here is solve this so we're going to write f of x is equal to and we're going to take the integral of 2x dx therefore we have f of x is equal to when we take the integral right we add one to the power so that gives us 2x squared then we take the power and put it down into the denominator and remember it's plus c and then we have a particular point is 0 1 and we can get a particular c here so we want to solve for c is what we want to do and therefore x is going to be 0 now I could actually have rewritten this and as a matter of fact I think I'm going to x squared plus c f of x as you can see I wrote this as an ordered pair but remember this was f of 0 is equal to 1 we plug in 0 and set it equal to 1 and therefore C is equal to 1 so a particular solution is f of x is equal to x squared plus 1 now I'm gonna graph this so you get a better idea of what's going on and what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna choose some values for C we're gonna let C equals 0 C is equal to actually 1, we'll even do that. C is equal to uh, 2. And how about C is equal to negative 1? Let's also do that. All right. So these are some solutions to that differential equation. Where you see the orange dot right here, this is the actual point 0, 1. This was the curve that we were looking at. This is uh, x squared plus 1 here, this particular curve here. But if we were to let c be 2, we'd be looking at uh, this curve. Of course, this is when c was equal to 0. And this is the curve where c was equal to negative 1 right here. In other words, x squared minus 1, x squared. Um, I guess I should say f of x is equal to x squared plus 1. And this particular one here is f of x is equal to x squared plus 2. But this is the particular one we're talking about because this is the curve that actually passes through the point 0, 1. So this gives us an idea anyway of what we're talking about by t t checking out this uh, picture. So let's solve some more differential equations. This is going to be uh, the next one we look at. The uh, k prime of t is equal to 6t cubed and uh, with some conditions here of k of 0 is equal to 1. 
So we're looking for the curve also that passes through the point zero one. We have k prime of t is equal to six t cubed and we're looking for where it passes through the point zero one. I'm going to write k of t is equal to the integral of six t cubed dt. We're going to have six t, we add one to the exponent, four, putting four down here into the denominator, plus c. So here's our general solution. Now we want to find this constant. We're going to do that by taking zero and plugging it in, setting it equal to one. But I guess before I do that, actually, I need to go ahead and simplify this down. So two goes into six three times. And two goes into four twice. Okay, so zero, one. K of zero <coughs> is three times zero to the fourth over two plus C. But remember what K of zero was equal to, it was equal to one, right? So we have three times, so this is all just becomes zero. Therefore, C is equal to one. Now we found our particular solution, and that is going to be K t is equal to 3t to the fourth over 2 plus 1. And if you like, you should graph that and check that out. Um, I did find a cool graphing utility on an app. I might as well just mention this. That uh, graphing app is running in the um, Chrome web browser. And uh, maybe if you looked up this, DES. MOS and it's the uh, graphing calculator. The graphing calculator. So try searching for this and it will come up. This is what I'm using. I guess it's only fair to uh, mention their name. Now the next one we're going to work is this bottom one right here. F double prime of X is equal to 3. Um, we have a condition here, f prime of 2 is equal to 5, and f of 2 is equal to 10. Couldn't find the screen there. Okay, we have f prime, or f double prime, I should say, f double prime of x is equal to 3. Then we had f prime of 2 is equal to 5. And then f of 2 is equal to 10. So this is a little bit uh, different, but um, instead of taking the integral once, we're going to take it twice. So this time we're given the second derivative. And then we've got some initial conditions over here. And all we're going to do now is write f prime of x is equal to the integral of 3 dx. So we say that f prime of x is equal to, so we take the integral of 3 dx, and that's just going to be 3x plus c. Now we're going to take our conditions here plug our 2 in for x. We're going to set everything equal to 5. And so we have 3 times 2 plus c. And now we can go ahead and solve for our c. And I think I'll just write it over here. So if I were to bring this uh, 3 times 2 is 6 over to the left-hand side, we'd have 5 minus 6 
is equal to C. And therefore, you know what, I'm going to write it like this. C is equal to negative 1. All right, let's not forget that one. F of 2 is equal to 10 because I'm going to have to scroll down here. I'll just rewrite it. F of 2 is equal to 10. Rewriting it so I don't forget it. We have F prime of X is equal to, so we solved for our C up here, so this is 3X minus 1. Now the goal here is, is to figure out what is F of X. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to write F of X is equal to, now we're going to take the integral of the derivative here, this is 3x minus 1 dx. We're going to have 3x squared over 2 minus x plus c. So the integral of negative 1 here, or minus 1 is negative x, or minus x, I should say. And therefore, we have the general solution, but we want to find C now. And of course, we're going to do that by using those conditions there. F of 2 is equal to 10. So set this whole thing equal to 10. 3 times 2 squared. And that's all over 2 minus plugging um, 2 in for x again, plus c. So we have two 2's up here and one down here, so we can cancel one of these 2's out. So we're going to have uh, 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 plus c. That's all equal to 10. 6 minus 2 is 4, plus c. We're getting there, and of course this will be 10 minus 4 is equal to C, and therefore, and I'll just write it over here, C is going to be equal to 6. So we finally found what we're looking for, F of X is equal to 3X squared over 2 minus X plus 6. Oof. All right. So finally, this is where we are. So I'll be working some actually application problems, or I should say maybe some word problems on this, so you can uh, get a get maybe a better understanding of why we do these things. Um, we're going to uh, I think do a ball drop. We're going to do the ball drop. I think the ball drop was a couple days ago. All right, where we are in a Cal 1, and we're looking at uh, some uh, indefinite. And, well, actually, we're not doing uh, indefinite integration anymore. We're finding particular solutions, but this is the section. This is what it's called. A ball is thrown upward at an initial velocity of 45 feet per second from an initial height of five feet. Now, of course, we're, ne we're neglecting uh, air resistance and we're saying that the ball is going straight up and then coming straight back down again. What we're going to want to do is find the position function. So in a previous problem, we started with the second derivative. We were given some conditions with the first derivative and then we found its position function and that's all we're doing except we're just kind of adding an application here to that. All right. I'm using these uh, English units, feet per second, but you could use uh, meters per second if you wish and convert uh, 32 uh, feet to meters. I think it's like approximated to 9.8. Um, anyway, if you wish, if you want to do that. All right. So anyway, here's the given information right here, and, uh, and this is what we're going to be working with. So uh, rewriting our given information. So let me just draw a picture here. We got uh, here's the ground, let's say. Okay. And we're going to go up five feet. So if you can imagine a ball being shot out of a cannon 
and it's uh, approximately five feet from the ground or maybe you are going to release this ball and throw it straight up in the air ball is going to go straight up and then it's going to come straight back down again and here's something interesting it will reach a maximum height you might want to try to find that maximum height and then we could find things like how long did it take uh, for the ball to hit the ground after its uh, initial release so there's quite a few things we can find here but uh, we want to construct this uh, position function and of course we're given the second derivative so to find h prime of t h prime of t we're going to take the integral of negative 32 <coughs> and so we have negative 32 t plus c is our h prime of t but now we've got some conditions here 0 45 so if we set it equal to 45 plug 0 in for uh, t negative 32 0 plus c therefore c becomes 45 and so now we have k or not k hmm, h prime of t is equal to negative 32 t plus 45. Now we want to take the integral of this that's dt and this is going to be our position function actually h of t and let's go back up here this is when h is 0 is equal to 5 okay so we have negative 32 t squared over 2 plus 45 t plus c and therefore we have h of t is equal to and now what we're going to want to do is take 2 divided into 32 negative 16 t squared plus 45 t plus c we're just simplifying it down a little bit so remember at time 0 h of t is equal to 5 feet so we set it equal to 5 plugging 0 in up here and so we end up getting c is equal to 5 therefore our position function h of t is equal to negative 16 t squared we have plus 45 t and then c is going to be plus 5 whoa I wrote a C there that should be a 5 not a C okay well now we have our position function I'm gonna go ahead and graph this and we get quite a bit of information uh, from the graph now remember this was a ball that was thrown straight upward now this is the graph of that it's time on the uh, on this axis here remember this represents time and then this axis represents height so this is where the ball was actually initially released at time zero um, we were five feet off the actually surface of the ground here well we can get some interesting stuff from this graph for example this would be the maximum height that the ball actually reached so at 1.41 seconds the height of the ball was uh, 36 feet 0.64 by looking down here where time is 2.92 you can see that the height is zero so it took 2.92 seconds for the ball to go to travel upward starting at five feet above the ground for the ball to go all the way up and then come all the way down and hit the ground it took 2.92 seconds and of course we can show this 
by just the uh, by the position. Now that we've constructed the position function, we could get these numbers. So remember how to find maximum the max. You would just take the derivative of this, h prime of t is equal to negative 32t plus 45, taking the derivative, setting, setting it equal to 0, and solving for t. So we'd have negative 45 over negative 32, and that's going to be equal to your t, and then that should be equal to the number that we saw on the graph at the maximum height, which is approximately 1.41 seconds. Now if we wanted to find where the ball actually went up and then came down, that's when the height is zero. When the height is zero, so you would take this, set it equal to zero, and then solve for t. And I think I, you know, we saw what that value was on the graph, but if you wanted to find the actual, um, how long it actually took the ball to come up and then come all the way down and hit the ground, right? you would set the whole thing equal to zero. That's when the height is zero. We want to know what is the time. All right, what is the time? So you'll want to solve for this. Probably going to have to use the quadratic equation, maybe. I don't know. Um, I'll let you do that. And you should come up with what was on our graph. And that was 2.92. So your solution is probably going to be, one of your solutions will be uh, that number there. Looks like negative 0.11. And then the other solution will be 2.92. And of course, that's the solution that we want. And of course, we need to keep in mind now that this was, uh, that this ball, or whatever this thing is, projectile, started at 5 feet above the ground. So we want to keep that in mind and then it traveled upward and then came directly straight down. Okay, came directly straight down. And it actually turns out, I remember when I was first learning this, I was so excited about this. It turns out that uh, this stuff is pretty accurate. <laughs> um, you know, we're not traveling very far distances, so therefore our resistance is kind of really, um, doesn't really make a difference. Um, but this stuff's pretty accurate, and you could test this by getting up at the top of a bridge and dropping the ball and seeing how long it takes, let's say, to hit the water or whatever, drop a rock, see how long it takes to hit the water. But you would use this exact same uh, method in, uh, in doing so. So it's pretty fun to experiment, experiment with this.